record on this computer. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inside Talk Show. I'm Carla Elizondo. Inside Talk Show, it's an inside job. We're living from the inside out, not the outside in. Do not be a victim of circumstance. If you're allowing anything, anything, or anyone to dictate how you feel, you're living from the outside in. We determine how we feel, no matter what's going on outside. Anyways, we're continuing the reading of The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. We're on chapter eight, thinking in the certain way. All right. Turn back to chapter six, reread the story of the man who formed a mental image of his house, and you will get a fair idea of the initial step toward getting rich. You must form a clear and definite mental picture of what you want. You cannot transmit an idea unless you have it yourself. Remember, we talked about the other day. Our mind is like a camera. Whatever is whatever is imaged or impressed is exposed. Whatever is impressed is expressed. Whatever is imaged is exposed. You must have it before you can give it. You must have it before you can give it, right? We can only give what we, we have. And many people fail to impress the thinking substance because they have themselves only a vague and misty concept of the things they want to become, to do, or to have. Let's just check in right now. When was the last time you allowed yourself to write a full list of everything you want, every single thing you desire in every area of life? Health, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, finances, money, relationships, love, family, significant other, friends, or career, work, job, your calling, the service you provide, your daily work. What do you want in each area? I encourage you to write them down. And if you're listening to this and you're free tonight, Thursday, we have our last class of writing your life script, 6 p.m. If you're interested, message me. I'll send you the link. You can join us tonight. We have got to know what we want first. And we think, yeah, Carla, I know what I want. You'd be surprised. Assignment for today. Take a piece of paper and a pen. Get quiet. Allow yourself 10 minutes. Relax. And take each of those areas. Finance, work, love, health. And write down. Just let it flow. Write a list of everything you really want. Allow yourself to go there. And see what comes up. Any resistance. But, well... Any resistance to just allowing yourself to do that imaginative exercise. It's pretty interesting. It is not enough. You should have a general desire for wealth to do to do good with. Everybody has that desire. It is not enough that you should have a wish to travel, see things, live more, etc. Everybody has those desires also. If you were going to send a telegram message to a friend, you would not send the letter, the letters of the alphabet in their order and let him him construct the message for himself nor would you take words at random from the dictionary you would send a cohort sentence one which meant something yeah you wouldn't take just random so say you have a sentence that you want to convey to a friend you wouldn't take all of the words in alphabetical order and send them and then let them figure it out you would send them in the order you wanted them to be understood When you try to impress your wishes upon the thinking substance, remember that it must be done in a coherent statement. Be clear, be bold. And that's kind of what I said before. You'll be surprised that when you're writing it, we really curtail how we ask because we think there's something blocking it or that we can't have it. Or by boldly asking, that's like being, that's just outrageous or selfish or whatever. You must know what you want and be definite. You must know what you want and be definite. You can never get rich or ignite the creative power into action by sending out unformed longings, unformed longings and vague desires. Go over your desires just as the man I have described went over his house. See just what you want and get a clear mental image picture of it as you wish it to look when you get it. Allow yourself to go there. Allow yourself to go there. Imagine yourself there in every live vivid color HD detail. As the sailor has the port toward which he is sailing in his mind, you must have a clear mental picture continually in your mind. You must keep your face toward it all the time. 
you must no more lose sight of it than the steersman loses sight of the compass. I love the analogy of we're all ships. No one else is on our ship but us. We might be sailing with a fleet of ships, our family, our friends, our partners. But we're on our own ship. No one else is on our ship. It's just us. And only us, only we can do that daily work coming up from, you know, under, um, underneath after we sleep, looking up at the weather, shifting the sails. Remember, sails are like your attitude, checking the sails, checking your attitude. Is it going to work with the wind and the outside or is it not? Is it going to go against it? If you don't check your attitude, the day will be harder. And remember, take it day by day. So you're on a ship. You're sleeping, get up for the day, look, check the sails, see the weather, check your map, which are your goals. This is what I have to do today to get closer to my, the island or the goal that I'm going to take next. And then you keep hopping onto the next one and the next one. Never ending. You never arrive. It's just a constant journey of amazing island stops at all the places you dream of. Just keep collecting memories and keep moving on. We have to check in every day at the direction we're going. It says, just as a sailor has the port toward which he is sailing in his mind, you must have a clear mental picture continually in your mind of where you're going. You must keep your face forward it, toward it all the time. You must no more lose sight of it than the steersman loses sight of the compass. Or we're just drifting. We're just drifting. If we don't have a direction and we don't know where we're going, we're going to crash. We're just going to drift. Do you trust the outside circumstances to lead you to where you want? We talked about this before. There's a program um, called Lead the Field. I love it. And it talks about how when a ship wants to get into a port, there's like thousands, hundreds of miles of rocky coastline that it has to navigate through. Think about that. If there's a port or a place or a dream or a goal you want to enter, you can't just lazily lay back and think that you're going to randomly enter the port. You really got to do some work, pay attention, do the steering, and that's the only way you're going to get there. No one can do it for you. Nobody, because you're the only one on the ship. It is not necessary to take exercise in concentration, nor to set apart special times for prayer and affirmation, nor to go into silence, nor to do occult stunts of any kind. These things are well enough, but all you need is to know that that you know what you want and to want it enough so that it will stay in your thoughts. <clears throat> People talk about this all the time. How do I get that desire going? Well, the, the fire kind of went away, so maybe it wasn't for me. Maybe that dream wasn't real. But if you have something that keeps coming up and you want it, it's real. You do just have to start the fireplace up, get the fire burning, the, the fire under your belly. And we get those kicks in the pants every now and then, like, oh, we gotta wake up. Someone else motivates us, we're jealous of somebody, they got something, if I could have done that. Yeah, you could have, but you were sleeping on the job. And trust me, I know from personal experience, whatever you want, go for it. You can have it, but you have to just pay attention. Stay at the steering wheel adjust the sails. It's work. It's good work. It's fun work. You feel good about it. And it's just one little step every day, one little step every day. So it's not necessary to take exercises in concentration, nor to set apart like special times for meditation or study or occult stunts. These are all great. Um, but all, all you need is to know what you want and to want it enough so that you'll stay focused on it. It'll stay in your thoughts. We have strong will. Unfortunately, it's willed towards all the crap we don't want. In, in a past life, if I was, you know, I wanted a drink or I wanted to go out or I wanted a night of just like, you know, reverie. Oh, I got it. I didn't stop thinking about it until I got it, until I scratched that itch. But those were destructive, maladaptive habits and patterns. Let's just shift that now to the accomplishments I want to achieve. Because that willpower is there. Or if I wanted that chocolate bar or that ice cream, ooh, it's going to happen. We just have to shift that urge, uh, sense of urgency for the things we want. 
Um, and you got to be winning every day, little goals. That's why little goals are so important, whether it be, you know, a 10 minute workout, a walk, a run, reading a chapter in a book, anything that grows you towards your goal. Um, you need those little wins, because if you go too long without a win, you get discouraged and disheartened. And you can have a win every day. Every day you can have a win, little wins. It keeps the momentum going, keeps that fire going. All right. So all you need to do is know what you want and want it enough so that it will stay in your thoughts. Spend as much, and let me just, just know what you want and want it enough so that it stays in your thoughts. How do you do that? Just keep thinking of it over and over. It's like a snowball effect. Any thought we have that we continue with, it's like rolling down, down a, a snow hill. The ball just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And an example is we do that with things that we're afraid of or worried or we're scared of. If you're worried about how to pay the rent, well, you just keep going down that mountain and it's a big ball of worry. It's a habit. Neg we're addicted to that, those negative worry, anxiety, fearful thoughts. Let's just, like any habit, it's through the repetition. Is it going to be easy at first? No. But do you want it? Yes, you do. So just make a committed decision. Write out an affirmation. Write out a goal. Say it 100 times a day. Write it out 100 times a day. And I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. You can do it. You can do it. It's just you need that support. You need that network. Get a mentor. Call me. I would be happy to answer any question you have. Okay. Spend as much of your leisure time as you can in contemplating your picture. Remember that you do not need to take exercises to concentrate your mind on a thing which you really want. Of course you don't. It is the things you do not really care about that require effort to fix your attention upon them. Let me read that again. Remember that you do not need to take exercises to concentrate your mind on a thing which you really want. You do not have to put any effort into concentrating on something you really want. It's the things you do not really care about that require effort to fix your attention upon them. Like when we were in grade school, math or homework, we had to really focus because we did not want to do that. We had to really focus, like get it together. Same goes for the things we want. If you want to develop yourself and study and learn, at first, when you're reading a book, you might be like, oh, God, where's my mind? You keep spiraling out thinking, what did I just read? You have to keep reading it over and over. You want to scroll instead. You hear a ding go off. You check your messages. And you have to focus back on what you want. It might not feel like it at first, but through the repetition, it becomes a good obsession, an addiction, a happy one. That actually gets you results you want because we're addicted and we're obsessed with other things. It's just getting us negative results. Okay. Unless your desire to get rich is strong enough to hold your thoughts to the purpose as magnetic pull, as a magnetic pull holds the needle of the compass, it will hardly be worthwhile for you to try to carry out the instructions given in this book. The methods I am presenting here are for people whose desire who desire for riches is strong enough to overcome mental laziness and have and love and the love of ease. Okay. The more clear and definite you make your picture and the more you dwell upon it, the stronger your desire will be. And the stronger your desire, the easier it will be to hold your firm fixed, your mind firmly fixed upon the picture of what you want. However, something more is necessary than merely seeing the picture clearly. If that is all you do, you are only a dreamer and will have little or no power for accomplishment. Behind your clear vision, you must, there must be the purpose to realize it, to bring it out in tangible expression. And behind this purpose must be an invincible and unwavering faith that the thing is already yours. Faith. Having faith that what you want is already yours. We talked about this yesterday. How do you gain the faith? You know, Carla, I really believe that I can do it. I just don't have the faith that things will fall into line or it hasn't worked out so many times in the past, I've kind of lost my faith. Faith can be built and strengthened through gratitude of what you already have. Start with the little things. Be grateful for what you already have. 
The money you have in the bank, be thankful for every moment. Every time you purchase something, give gratitude, give thanks. Um, for the bed you sleep in, for the pillows, for the clothes on your back, for the food you eat, for the water, clean water, fresh water, everything that's so accessible, all of your limbs, all of your faculties, the clean air, you're still alive. There's still an opportunity. If you're breathing, there's still an opportunity to change things. Be grateful. That'll build your faith. So behind your clear vision must be the purpose to realize it. And behind that purpose must be an invincible and unwavering faith that the thing is already yours, that it is at hand and you have already, you have to only take possession of it. It's done. It's like a movie. Neville Goddard talks about this. When you dream, you daydream, picture the end, a happy ending, you achieving your goal. See it, feel it, live in it. What does it feel like? It's already yours. So if you already know the ending, think of a movie you've already know, you, you know the ending to. When you, if you walk in in the middle of it and you see the, the climax and the, oh my God, people are like, oh, what's going to happen? But you already know what's going to happen. Are you sitting there worried like, oh my God, what's going to happen? No, you already know the ending. That's the same with your life. Pick the ending you want and know without a doubt, just like a movie you've seen before, because that's what we're doing. We're playing mental movies, that it's already yours. Stop acting like the victim bypasser who's in the audience has no idea how the movie's going to end. Like, oh, I'm worried. How's it going to end? Knock it off. How do you want it to end? That's how it will end. Focus on that. Let's really get serious about this. Let's stop acting like a passive viewer in the audience of the movie of our lives that's playing in front of us. Knock it off. Let's stop acting like we have no control. That is being a victim. Admitting that other things have the power to drive this ship. This is what's driving our ship. And I know you've done it before. You have gotten to where you want to be before. Just this new level where you want to go, it just seems harder. You're like, ah, well, I could get that, but I don't know about this. If you want it, it's yours. Let's stop acting. Let's suspend disbelief just for the next 30 days. Believe with full faith that it's already yours. You're already there. Act as if. How would you dress? How would you walk? How would you talk? How would you eat? How would you sleep? Where would you go? Who would you call? Let's really get into it. That's what it's all about. I'll stop there. I think we have, let me see, one more page. No, a couple more pages. So we ended off, um, okay, so have an unwavering faith that the thing is already yours and at, it is at hand and you have already, you have only to take possession of it. Live in the new house mentally until it takes form around you physically. In the mental realm, enter at once into full enjoyment of the things you want. Whatsoever the... Whatsoever things ye ask for, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. See the things you want as if they were actually around you all the time. See yourself as owning and using them. Make use of them in imagination just as you will use them when they are there in your tangible possession. Dwell upon your mental picture until it is clear and distinct. Then, take the mental attitude of ownership toward everything in that picture. Take possession of it in your mind in the full faith that it is actually yours. Hold to this mental ownership. Do not waver for an instant in the faith that it is real. Do not waver. Surround yourself with positive books, audiobooks, podcasts, lectures, people, classes, meetings, groups, masterminds, coaching programs, teachers, whatever. We we have to do it by ourselves, but we don't have to do it alone or the other way. We, we have to do it alone, but we can't do it by ourselves. We have to do it by ourselves, but we can't do it alone. I think that makes more sense. Are you getting what you want? Are you getting it as quickly as you want to get it? Um, it's a time to be honest with ourselves. Time's a ticking. One of my mentors said a very harsh truth. She goes, Carla, if you feel like you're wasting your life, you probably are. Ouch. 
So that's what drives and motivates me. Time is of the essence. We're lucky to be here. And we're here for a reason. Let's make this world a better place. Let's be happy, positive people and help other people who are in need in every way. Wealth in every way. Health, finance, love, service. Let's do it. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And like I said, if you want the link for tonight's class, it's the last one. I'll send it to you. Hope to see you later. Have a wonderful day.